Every year, millions of Bangladeshis are affected by flash flooding. Sudden shifts in river courses destroy crops, farms and homesteads, decimating communities. The resulting sandbars that are left behind aren't stable enough to support natural vegetative growth and they remain as barren sand until the rivers rise again. The communities here are being completely changed through Practical Actions Project. Their innovation and new approach had them creating a new farming technique known as sandbar cropping. It sounded almost farcical that pumpkins could provide such uh, an incredible solution to a terrible problem. I was supposed to be travelling to Bangladesh to see and experience this firsthand, but due to political risks I've been unable to travel there. I've got some questions that I wanted to ask the local people from both areas in order to find out more about the issue. First, I'm talking to Hasin and Nazmal. They both travelled to the village of Chalmari to talk to the locals who are yet to receive any help or support from Practical Action to establish the needs for the community. Hasin, when when you were speaking with these families, they're literally sat with 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 land in front of them that could be used. I mean, the solution is is on their doorstep, and yet, what is preventing them from using that land to to grow their own crops? Is it is it all come down to ownership? In fact, uh, not about only one ownership. The first thing is about knowledge. They don't know that that sort of technology is existing. Adopting that technology, they can get you know the pumpkin and they can sell it out. The second thing, when we visited the place, actually we, we discussed with a lot of uh, inhabitants there who are living there for quite a long time and they shifted their house from one place to another place and sometimes is as, uh, as, as many as 27 times they shifted their household. So you can imagine their economic situation. So when we are discussing with them and discussed about the potential of our work, they were kind of amazed and they didn't even think that it is, this is possible. But all of them expressed their willingness to participate in our program and to, have, uh, to move towards a better life. Sitting at the heart of this issue is starvation and malnutrition. And I don't think any of us can really imagine what it is to go hungry. So I wanted to better understand what effect on the body this really has. I met with nutritionist Joe Travers, who helped to explain it all. We've just heard from one family who, whose daily diet consists of rice, maybe some dal, and that's it. Mm -hmm. What happens to the body if that's all it's fueled by over a period of time? There's lots of ramifications of that. So, in the short term, protein energy malnutrition can lead to weight loss, so low weight for your height. But in the long term, that can lead to poor cognitive development and poor physical development in children. This can lead on to poor educational attainment. And also, because their physical development is affected, it can have an effect on how their ability to carry out physical labor. And that has an impact on their capacity to earn money. And from that, you get this cycle. So they have less money to spend on good nutrition. Their children don't learn as well because they've got poor cognitive development. And the cycle continues and continues through generations. Practical Action have set up a soup kitchen at Spitalfields Market in London. And I'm going to go and get myself as involved as I can to find out more from the staff about their experiences and well, to try and make myself useful. 
This is Amanda and Lil, and they've managed to uh, pull off what I couldn't. They managed to make their way over to Bangladesh to visit the project firsthand. I don't think anything could have prepared me for the poverty that, that, that existed in the area where practical action hadn't been working. And what were they eating and living on before you arrived in their communities and rice. started putting pumpkin on the diet? <laughs> Just rice. rice. <laughs> we asked um, the children in the, in the village to draw us some pictures, and one of them drew a picture, and he wrote on it, this is a pumpkin, it grows in our country, it is delicious, but we can't afford to eat it. Um, the contrast between the two areas was quite remarkable. I think what I noticed the most was just how much happier everyone was because they were comfortable in their own lives, they were able to feed their families, they were able to send their children to school, they were able to have a nice home, you know. It, it was just amazing to be able to see the difference that it made. I've heard about the struggle in the region, but the good news is we can make a difference. <laughs> The lady with, that you spoke with explained that out of 50 pumpkins, They'll keep a few, but most get distributed within the community. So they're really helping one another. Everyone in the community benefits from this. Exactly. This is a social intervention, not for the household alone. And Children are also uh, learning the process of the technology in their earliest stage of their life. In future, when the mom and dad will return, when they will take in the charge of the family, so we need not to repeat the technology training or educating people again. Seeing is believing how the life is transforming, how the infertile land is transforming the lives of millions of poor in Bangladesh at the moment. So innovation is not feeding them only food and money. They are also equally helping them to psychologically to break through their mind in a negative direction to a positive direction to transform their life and go ahead with the positive hope for a prosperity in future. So I hope you're as gripped by this proposition as I am. We, we started out together on this, listening to communities that have nothing, that are waiting for the support that practical action can give them. We then travelled to the communities that have had that support and we've seen the way their lives have been transformed by something as simple as growing crops of pumpkins in land that they thought was completely infertile. And we can see that actually by continuing to support these projects, we can change lives, well, beyond recognition. Starvation, malnutrition, we can reduce that. Families can start to educate their children, better themselves, sustain themselves. All they need you to do is keep up that support. So please, keep your donations coming. Don't forget, the government will be matching you pound for pound.